Hopefully this works. Oh, that was not necessarily a good idea. This is a Purcell Prusik. It is an adjustable personal anchor or tether that they say if you were to fall on it, will slip a little and help absorb some of that shock. Unlike a Dyneema sewing sling that has absolutely no shock absorption whatsoever, and this would potentially really hurt you or possibly even break if you were to fall hard enough on it. But we are going to explore this today with some slow pulls, some drop tests, and chase a couple what ifs that I'm anticipating you guys might be curious about. If I missed any, put them in the comments below. Now, before I show you how to tie a Purcell Prusik, let's go over a Prusik Prusik. It is a loop of cord that you grab the knot side and you go in, in this case, three times I'm going to do. And once you've wrapped it around there, you're going to dress it. This is a friction hitch. And what's nice about having the knot in your hand while doing it is it doesn't end up right here where it needs to be grabbing the rope. This acts like an ascender, but without teeth. If you dress it properly, then in this particular one, you can pull down with it or you can pull up with it. Not all of them do that. Sometimes they only go in one direction. In order to move it, you just grab and slide it. Now you put enough load on this and it won't slide while under that load. And we have several videos about that. All will be in the description below that we've explored with friction hitches, Purcell Prusiks even, and anything related to this video. Oh! Oh, the Purcell slipped a bit. Now for your Prusik to grab the best, it's typically recommended that it's three millimeters skinnier than the host rope. But you'll notice that the Purcell Prusik is wrapped around itself. And the reason I think you can get away with that is because it's grabbing two strands. And we have a video of Purs Prusiks on two strands. And it actually grabs super good enough. There's enough material there. It squeezes the ropes together. It's great. So let me show you now how to tie this. Let's start with the side that does not adjust. We have two different styles here. This is a double fisherman's knot, and this is a figure eight Flemish BFK sort of a knot. And we'll show you how to do both of those. I don't think it matters. Let's make the comment section super helpful. And if you know if one way is better than the other, please put that in there. So for the double fisherman, you take your two strands like this and you wrap around your finger going back towards the center and you stick that in there. And that's basically a stopper knot wrapped around the other rope. Turn it around, you do the same thing, but you're wrapping it around the other strand. Go around both, something like that. And they slide independently of each other until they smash up against each other. And you just make sure that they sit nicely with each other and that's going to be super good enough. You don't necessarily need your tails this long for a knot like this. Now the way to make a fixed loop is to set your rope up like that and tie a figure eight incorporating those loose tails into your knot. And you can decide how big you want this loop by just adjusting your rope when you first start. Now, depending what you're gonna use it for, this loop can be small, so it can be girth hitched to, to your harness as a personal anchor, or you might want this bigger if you plan on prusiking this around a rope later, which we'll cover in a bit. The way I like to do it is I like to put it in my palm, and I like to go around two fingers, no, the phone was off. I did that so good. No way. So oftentimes you'll see this start on the back of people's hands so they can wrap it around their pinky three times, pinch that there, and wrap it around their thumb three times. And you work your way towards the top of your finger here. So I got three wraps and three wraps. And when you put this together, then you have your two strands that will be in the center. This is the strand that crosses everything and if you dress it nicely you've got one two three strands one two three strands and that works for some people however i'm supposed to get this in there and i don't necessarily like how small that is because then you're adjusting it a lot so the way i like to tie it is i like to put it in my palm so i can wrap it around two fingers because it makes the hole bigger pinch that there i will refrain from the jokes and then you take this side and you just flip it over on that side. And you have the same thing you have before, but you have this a lot bigger now, so you can stick this through it. Now to check that you have it right, you have these two main strands that are going parallel to the center, and the strand that crosses over is on the outside. So now I'm gonna take this, and if I don't want it to be so curly cued, go inside and out like that. And then we go through the whole thing. I pinch it with two fingers, and then I try to keep that dressed as possible wiggling that over there. Now it only takes a second to tie, 
and 10 minutes to dress. So you try to keep it as clean as possible while you are adjusting this thing to maintain the Prusik shape. There we go. Now it's nice and clean and it's not twisted anymore. When you're done, you wanna make sure that it's correct. You have these two strands that are coming parallel into the center and then the curly Q out to here where the cross strand is coming from the outside of the friction hitch. Now, how much material do you need? The one that I just made, I used three meters or nine or 10 feet of material to make this. And the furthest I could extend this out right now is not a full arm's reach. Don't, don't give me that. You will measure your Purcell Prusiks too. Now the one I just made is out of six millimeter accessory cord and the one I've been using for years is out of seven millimeter accessory cord. And this is about five meters long, a little bit more than 15 feet. This is a full arm's length when it's as short as it goes because I was using this to rig high lines where I would clip something near my feet and I'd be rigging a high line and I would be walking around and I wanted plenty of room to do that while staying clipped in near a cliff edge. However, the shortest this goes is 47 inches and the longest it goes is 84 inches. So this is not something you'd be climbing with. This is very specific to what I was using it for, but it's just to show that you can make these any length you want, depending what you are trying to do. Now, this isn't just a personal anchor. It could be used as a foot loop here. I've clipped it to an ascender and I can adjust it to the height that I want and I can stick my foot in it and now it's a foot loop. I can also bypass the need to use an ascender and I could just, if I have a large enough fixed eye, prusik the fixed eye directly to the rope and then I can adjust this for my foot and now I have a foot loop with just a prusik. You can also use it as adjustable legs to a litter in a rescue situation. We use them all over the place. We use them on our litters so that we can adjust them for how patients are sitting in them so if they're not perfectly centered, we can make it so their head isn't upside down. Or if we need it shorter, longer, depending on the terrain we're going in. But we use them because they're e somewhat easy to adjust and it gives us lots of flexibility. And you can also use these to secure the victim into the litter. Now, someone asked me if you could use this as an anchor and I don't think it makes a good one, even though it looks similar to what anchors look like. It's not redundant down here. You'll find out that this isn't even half as strong as a, the carabiner you're clipping to it. And these are really not self equalizing or adjusting. And if this was to slip, then you're starting to narrow in that angle on your anchor and putting more force up here. I just don't think it makes for a great anchor. What do you guys think? How much does this cost you ask? Well, at 59 cents per foot, 10 or 15 feet of this stuff is gonna possibly cost you less than the carabiner you're clipping to it. Is it the best personal anchor that you can have? Not really. When you sit on it, what's great is you can release it, but there's no way to like pull yourself in without taking your weight off and using two hands to shorten it. There's also a lot of material here that I don't think is worth using on a regular basis if let's say you're big walling and you're going to be manipulating this a lot. One nice thing about this is it doesn't have a loose tail. When you wrap it around you partially and you clip your back loop there, that's it. It doesn't have a dangling tail that you usually grab and pull yourself in hanging below you. I promise we will be testing Petzl Evolve Adjust's personal anchor, but we did just put out a video testing cow tails, which is a fixed ropes link to find out how much force is created with a static rope versus a dynamic rope. Now, I think it's fascinating to test a variety of personal anchors because there's a risk if you fall on these that you will shock load yourself too hard. And they say this slips and will help absorb some of that shock. So let's slow pull this and find out when it slips. So the six millimeter Purcell Prusik slipped at four kilonewtons and continued to slip between two and four until it could no longer slip and it broke at 10.0 kilonewtons. The next six millimeter test slipped at four and a half and it continued at four and it broke at 10.77. The third one was made from a different six millimeter accessory cord, also nylon, but it started to slip at four and it continued to three till the end and then it ultimately broke at 10.22. So the ones I've used for years are seven millimeter and I was hoping it would be a lot stronger than the six millimeter, but it broke only at 12.4. However, since that was over 10 years old, I made one out of a new seven millimeter material and it broke at 16 and it was a lot more grabby. 
Still not breaking at the prusik, but in the BFK like all the others. Broken the knot again. Now, how strong are these if you make them out of an eight millimeter accessory cord? Now this rope measures at nine millimeters, but it's called an eight millimeter, and it has started to slip at eight and a half kilonewtons, and it kept binding up as you can see in the graph, but it finally broke at 20 and a half. Now, nylon technically has a higher melting point than let's say Dyneema, but it also creates enough friction to get up to that temperature faster, and that's why you start to see these things bind up. However, our next eight millimeter test did not completely fuse it to itself, and it started to slip at five kilonewtons, kept going at four, and when it got to the end, it broke at 19.25. And this seems to be the weak point. Now, when do you break? Your MBS, or minimum breaking strength, is definitely below 10 kilonewtons. Now, it's not just the number that we're focused on, it's how fast you get to that number. When I was testing how much force you get in a bounce test, when you're bounce testing big wall gear, for example, it kind of hurt, and I was only getting two and a half K in. 2.7, ow. However, when we did our big rope swing, we got five kilonewtons on our body, and it didn't hurt because it took so long for us to get to that level. When I was taking whippers on a micro traction, I think it was only four and a half kilonewtons before I stopped, and that stuff was hurting. So it all depends on how fast you're getting to it. Now, I took a factor two fall on this Fifi hook while I was aid climbing, and that's not that far of a fall, right? It's just that I'm falling twice the distance than I have hook in the system. And so I was way up high and I fell and it straightened it out and it still hurt quite a bit. I just think it's really important to bring up the safety of your personal anchor or tether. It's fine like this, but as soon as you're above it and you fall on it, you're starting to create some serious problems. That's why we went to the drop tower. Now on our drop tower, we tested a 100 pound dummy, which is not that much, but we did test it in one of the worst falls you can have, about 1.8 fall factor. And you can see that it does slip a little and our peak force was 2.82. Now when we dropped it again on the same Purcell Prusik, we did get a little bit higher of force, even though it did slip because the nylon stretched out, the knots are cinched up and we got 4.64. You can see it melted from here to here. So less than a foot that it slipped. Now those numbers don't scare me, but again, it was only a hundred pound weight. And from the dummy to the load cell, it's kind of like you can't, you can only get them so close. And so it swings a little bit and that swing absorbs kind of a, a lot of the force. Now, if we compare this to a Dynema sling, which is extremely static, well, you can see we got 7.64 kilonewtons, which is a lot more apples for apples than what we just tested. Now, keep in mind, that's only with 100 pounds. If you're 200 pounds, it's going to destroy you. Technically, seven would probably destroy you, too. Now, DMM has drop test videos where the Dyneema sling actually broke, but that's because their dummy was also heavier. Now, what looks to be a problem with this being as short as it can get, one trick you can do is push it all the way up until that loop is small, take a second carabiner, and then clip it to your belay loop. And now you can be as close as two carabiners away from whatever you're clipping to. If you want to adjust the size of that loop, you can. And you can be exactly as far as you wanna be until you get into the normal working range of your Purcell. Now, when we tested this in the slow puller, because there's double the material, it didn't start slipping until 11 kilonewtons. It continued at eight and it, after slipping all the way to the end, finally broke at 23 because there's a lot more material there when you're pulling in a loop. But then we took this to the drop tower because it doesn't slip as well. And even though it's really hard to get a straight fall on such a short thing, we got a higher force at 5.26 because it really didn't slip. It doesn't look like it slipped at all. I don't see any of the burn marks that I normally see right here. Now we can test this all day long, but there is a girth hitch right here and a girth hitch can reduce the strength of what you're using. So is the girth hitch weaker than what's going on up here? Now it started to slip when we pulled it at four kilonewtons, continued for a bit until it finally broke in the knot at 11 and a half kilonewtons. Not at the girth hitch and not at the prusik part, but in the knot, in the big fat knot. So I did it again and it also, again, slipped at four, broke at the knot, but at 9.42. When you girth hitch nylon, it's not that bad because it can take the bends better than let's say a Dyneema sling. But it is nice to know this is not the weakest link right here. 
Now I wanted to repeat these drop tests with a heavier weight and with my all natural drop tower, I'm able to get the dummy closer to the line scale three. So it's more of a shock load. And we got eight kilonewtons, which is enough to hurt you. So technically even these nylon Purcell pressics are not shock absorbing enough if you were to fall hard enough on your personal anchor. And that dummy was only the same weight as me, about 160 pounds. It's kind of scary getting to eight kilonewtons if it's breaking between nine and a half to 11. Since it's fun to compare, I tested the Soen Dyneema Daisy on the drop tower with our heavier weight and less swing. Whoa, whoa, it ripped all the stitching. Well, that's shock absorbing. That would hurt. If you fell hard enough to break this stitching, you are already hurting pretty bad. So making this out of nylon accessory cord, it's still kind of grabby and we kind of do want it to slip a little bit more to shock absorb. What if we used a material that was a little bit more or a lot more slippery, like a Dyneema sling? Just a Dyneema sling that you tie a Purcell Prusik into. Now Dyneema technically has a lo much lower melting point compared to nylon, but it also doesn't generate much friction at all. So it's not going to generate that heat. So when I was slow pulling it, it would start to slip between 0.2 and 0.6 kilonewtons, which is not very much. But of course it slid all the way to the end. I didn't feel any glazing or anything, so it wasn't heating up. This slips a lot lower. 0.3 is when it started to slip and 0.2-ish is when it continued to slip. Not enough to melt it. It was the girth hitch that broke. So strength wise, it's super good enough. I'm not worried about the heat, but does it actually perform when you drop test something like that? Oh, that was not necessarily a good idea. Hmm, I don't know if I would do that. Well, good news. It absorbs shock when it completely breaks itself. It's, it like didn't even slow it down and it jammed up at the end of the Purcell Pressic. That's not the result I was expecting. I don't often get different results in the drop tower than I get the slow pull, but that one was good. I've heard that if you use a climb heist on your Purcell, that it would grab better, I was thinking maybe if you use Petzl Pure Line with the Dyneema sheath, that it's a Kern Mantle construction, so it'd be likely to grab maybe a little bit better. I'm not gonna chase those rabbits right now. This video is already taking me way too much effort. Sign up for my newsletter. I send it out every week with what we've updated, and I will build on this, just like this video is building on our other Purcell Prusik video, and then you can keep up with stuff without depending on the algorithm. When you sign up, you also get access to the downloads to the PDFs, so that way I can update you if I'm changing things in the Bolting Bible, for example. You get early access to films and giveaways and other stuff, so go sign up. So back in 2011, I <laughs> feel old saying it that way. Kyle Pease did a six, seven, and eight millimeter uh, Purcell Prusik test. And he did two, three, and four wraps for the Prusik part. And they did drop tests as well. And you can compare what they got with what we got in our blog. I'll make it easy to read and you can get into the weeds and get nerdy about that. But the takeaway is don't fall on personal anchors. Even these aren't super good enough to do. Uh, especially like the six mil, this isn't, like it's not even 10 kilonewtons and strong, which is kind of uh, unnerving if I fall hard enough on this that I can achieve something like that. Now, some people use a fixed length of rope as a personal anchor, and we just tested static rope versus dynamic rope in the slow pull test machines and the drop tower, and you can go check that video out next.